Thank you. I'd like to call the 10th regular meeting of the 2019-2020 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The most powerful leadership tool you have is your own personal example. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 10 present. Very good. Uh, next, we'll move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me in the pledge. To pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is item uh, on resignations, city attorney. There's one resignation tonight. Uh, Ray Hain is uh, resigning from the Architectural Review Board, effective immediately. Thank you. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next, we have a presentation by, it's a tourism update by Amy Wilson, the president of Visit Sheboygan Incorporated. Welcome, Amy. Okay. And normally we do these annually, and I haven't been here in a while, so I'll just take you through kind of the state of tourism right now. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. So first we start with a statewide overview in 2000, and I'm giving you basically 2018 numbers because every year the uh, Wisconsin State Department of Tourism hires a third party research company to um, do research on the economy of tourism. And we don't get those numbers in until the May after. So in 2019 in May, we finally get to see the last year and then we have to use all the trends from the past years also to look at going forward. So in 2018, Wisconsin had over 112 million visitors to the state. Um, the economy of tourism is worth 13.3 billion in visitors spending across 72 counties. Um, that is a plus 5% increase and the largest increase since 2014. The most notable um, increase is in money spent toward recreation and that's outdoor recreation. Um, 1.9 billion was captured and that was the highest gross overall um, highest growth rate at 8.4 percent more than hotel spending on hotel or food and beverage or any other type of entertainment next slide please so this is where Sheboygan County ranks we're 15th in the state um, Sheboygan County is has visitor spending at about 240 million per year that's the highest growth rate ever um, and among all of the uh, top 15 states at 7.64 percent. Next slide, please. So along the lakeshore, Sheboygan County ranks fourth. Um, and since 2011, we've had a $59.9 million increase in visitor spending into the county. Next slide. Now we drill down a little farther. Across the county, um, you can see that Sheboygan County represents about 42 percent of uh, room tax collected. The other municipalities that collect room tax rank in Destination Kohler, which captures about 37%, Elkhart Lake, Plymouth, and then Sheboygan Falls Tourism. And those are the areas that capture, um, actually collect room tax in the county. Next slide, please. So the Sheboygan Area Tourism Zone consists of the city of Sheboygan, the town of Sheboygan, and the town of Wilson. And in 2019, we projected that it would capture about 1.1 million in room tax when we did the projections. Um, but we are actually on track to go past 1.2 million. So it looks like we'll be surpassing the estimates. Next slide, please. And this is just a different way to look at um, basically how we rank. 
And this is um, room tax collected in the uh, tourism zone since 2010 and what we're projecting through 2020. You can see by next year we're looking at 1.4 million. Next slide, please. Um, and just one more visual for you to show how the increase looks when we chart it out. Next slide, please. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen the new building going up on 8th Street at the bridge, across from Superior Liquor. Um, and this will be the new visitor center that's going in. It's not a building that we'll own. We're actually a tenant there. Um, mm -hmm. It's a partnership that we're doing in conjunction with um, Leslie Kohler's personal development business. Um, in the visitor center will be located the new offices for the Sheboygan staff. Obviously, tons of tourism information, a whole gallery and lobby area committed to the guest experience. There'll be a film, film viewing area with um, videos and films that we're shooting around the city and in the tourism zone to show all of the different sites and attractions to visit. Um, there'll be exhibit installation for some hands-on experiences, a gift and souvenir shop, free on-site parking so visitors could actually park their vehicle there for the day and go experience the tourism area. Um, we're planning on having the bike, bike share program there and a trolley stop. Next slide, please. But for a new experience, we're calling this full steam ahead. Our research has shown that eco and environmental hands-on experiences are trending very, very high right now, which also goes with the um, actual increase in outdoor recreational experiences. So a science on the sphere will also be in the building. Not sure if you're familiar with that. When it was at Spaceport, it's owned by Leslie Kohler. It will go in the new facility. It's a six-foot globe um, that projects real live online um, experiences about what's happening on the planet, such as real-time volcano activity, real-time earthquake activity, how many people across the planet are online at that very moment. Um, this is something that's fed from NOAA. So we'll be installing that in the visitor center. That will probably be on 24 hours a day, so it'll be a nice visual from the street as you drive by there. Um, we're also working on a science in the sky project. That's the top picture that you see. That will be self-contained eco environment lab. Um, that will actually have aquaponics experiments, hydraulics experiments, um, an edible garden. It will capture like some of the plant life that's in our Lake Michigan beachfront area. So really giving people the experience of the environment, um, of the area and how precious the Great Lakes resources are and the shorelines that accompany them. Um, inside the visitor center, it will also be a classroom and lab. We're partnering with SEAS on this, the Sailing Education Association of Sheboygan. And we'll be holding um, actually tour groups through there, classes through there with hands-on experiences that even visitors can pop in and take advantage of. Um, we've already been talking to the school district about working with us on some of these activities as well. In the future, we're planning a, to add a research vessel to the community. This is also in partnership with SEAS. The research vessel will be able to take tour groups out on Lake Michigan. An ROV, Remote Operated Vehicle Program, will um, also accompany that. So we'll actually be able to put robotics or remote operated vehicle robots underwater to look at shipwrecks and take soil experiments um, and then bring those back into the center and have some hands-on experience with that. Also along the area, the riverfront area where the visitor center will be, be built, we'll be looking at partnerships for SUP and kayak rentals for visitors right out of that same space. Next slide, please. That is slotted to open, by the way, in April 2020. Um, so just a little research here. Our target markets right now, basically ecological and education tours are high, high in demand, and it's growing every day. This is just a new cultural trend, which I'm sure some of you are quite aware of as you have your daily experiences. But these groups are looking for very rare experiences that educate. Um, share, share local and inside information that immerses them in the culture and also kind of a protection of the future. And I think as we look around us, we can all feel that that's a trend growing, especially with the younger generation. Next slide, please. <coughs> Outdoor recreation is king right now. You can tell from the state's numbers that it's had the most growth in the last year where visitors spend their money. Um, but also just Friday, the uh, Wisconsin State Department of Tourism announced its new position that it is searching for, and that's it for a director of outdoor recreation office that they've just added. So that tells you the type of emphasis the state's putting on it and how important it is in trends. So we'll also be following that lead and focusing on this. Next slide, please. This will just give you, this is a little bit of the state information that we've gotten. 
Um, over 146 million Americans, or almost half, um, basically participate at least once in an outdoor activity. You can see on this slide, it might be hard to see, um, but about 19% of Americans living in the South Atlantic do, and that is the highest rated area for outdoor activity. But number two is the Pacific region and the East North Central region at 16% each where Wisconsin is located. So it's a very, very large market here. Next slide, please. This just gives you a little idea on male participation and outdoor activities. Um, the green line is outdoor, red line is inside, and the blue line is sports, or sports membership or participation. So you can see that outdoor experiences are actually more important when they're a hands-on kind of individualistic experience than any other category for males 21 to 40. Next slide, please. For women, same age group, it comes in a little bit lower, but definitely very high up there and still worth working towards that market as well. Next slide, please. Just to give you an idea, um, Visit Sheboygan's mission is to create and market experiences that reflect emerging cultural and social trends at the forefront of next generation travel. So we're always looking at the cutting edge, finding new ways to offer what we have, but in different ways that reflect new cultural and generational travel trends. Next slide, please. So the vision of Visit Sheboygan is to excel as the destination leader of next generation travel. We've been doing pretty well at that, actually, along the lakeshore. Um, fulfilling desires for a connection to place, environment, local engagement, and innovative in adventure. Obviously, as our long-term vision goes forward, we're focusing right on target market with what the new trends in the market are telling us. Next slide, please. So our competitive advantage, and as we look at this, and I know everybody's looking at the economy right now. Last year, everything looked great. Three days ago, we're going, what's going to happen? Um, but either way, travel to Sheboygan is in a very, very good position because even in downtimes, as long as we're looking at the right markets and new trends, we are an accessible, affordable, very affordable destination that offers an exceptional opportunity to leverage waterfront recreation and leisure activities. Um, and it's close, contemporary, and adventurous. And these all stay in line with the marketing trends coming out of next generation travel. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but by 2028, millennial travelers will actually overtake baby boomers in the population. Um, and more than 88% of them travel each year as opposed to 75% of all Americans. And they're worth about over 220 billion in travel dollars. So that next generation travel focus is really, really important to us. So that's where the focus will be. And that's our presentation for tonight. And I'll take any questions if you have any. Amy, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the great work that you and your staff sure. are doing. Appreciate it. Thanks, Amy. Next, we have a second presentation, our second quarter 2019 strategic plan items and critical measures review by city administrator Daryl Hofflin. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, this evening, I will present an update of the City of Sheboygan's action items and related benchmarks. For those of you that uh, may not be aware, or for our viewing audience, uh, this is a copy of the City of Sheboygan's Strategic Plan 2017-2021. Uh, this is a five-year strategic plan. It was approved uh, in December of 2016. As a reminder, the City has six focus areas, quality of life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, governing and fiscal management, and last is communication. So some of the projects, as you're aware, are multi-year in nature. Uh, some of those that are, were initially identified in 2019 uh, have been postponed until 2020. Uh, many of the projects cannot happen uh, with a single department. Uh, a lot of collaboration occurs, not only internally, but also externally. Uh, staff does leverage intergovernmental resources and other contributions to maximize uh, savings as well as taxpayer money and ultimately to improve output. Uh, staff utilizes public feedback for improvements and modifications. And again, we're attempting to improve uh, our com comparative benchmarking with other municipalities instead of simply comparing from one year to another internally, it's going to be more and more important for us to look at other communities as far as meeting different benchmarks. 
for those of you uh, on the council, you received a, a spreadsheet. Uh, please note that anything uh, printed in blue uh, typically is a sort of a quick way for you to identify those action items or benchmarks that we've actually met or exceeded uh, our, 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 our goals or accomplishments. Quality of life is the first focus area. Uh, again, I'm, I tried to pick <clears throat> those benchmarks or action items that I think uh, help tell a good story, or if there's issues, in fact, that do not tell a good story, we need to share that information as well. Uh, first is 93% uh, of fire responses occur within 380 seconds, which is 6.33 uh, minutes. Uh, our goal, uh, our established benchmark is 90% of the time that we will, in fact, meet that 380 second response time. Uh, the first half of this year, and again, all this information is the first six months uh, of 2019, uh, we've actually exceeded 93% of the time we have met or exceeded that 382nd uh, uh, response time. In looking back uh, over 2018, 17, 16, or 15, uh, the response uh, rate or response time in 2019 exceeds all of those previous four years. The city does have, uh, through the police department, a high visibility education enforcement deployment uh, machine. Uh, again, as you receive concerns from your constituents. Uh, each alder can request uh, the possible deployment of this machine to help us get a feel for traffic, especially potential speeding in your area. Uh, so far, uh, six have been deployed for the first six months. Uh, our goal is a minimum of seven per year. Prescription drug collection, uh, we do have at our police station a drop-off uh, box. Uh, for the first six months, 706 pounds, uh, which represents 58% of our annual goal of 1,200 pounds. Um, we've also received help from, I think, Walgreens and other uh, local uh, pharmacists uh, in, in the collection of these uh, unused uh, drugs. Seven joint projects have occurred with uh, Sheboygan Area School District uh, that exceeds uh, our goal. Nine neighborhood associations uh, have been approved. This is again through June. As you're aware, at your last meeting on August 5th, a 10th uh, in park association was approved. Uh, last, uh, I don't think it's on the slide, uh, property crimes, specifically uh, type, I think it's called category one. Um, we are at year to date 7.6 crimes uh, compared to the overall 2019 benchmark of 22.25. So we're, even though we're halfway through the year, uh, we're significantly under uh, at only 34%. Uh, quality of life, uh, 47 neighborhood association meetings have occurred so far this year, or 67% of our annual goal of 70 meetings on an annual basis. Uh, for the senior services uh, joint projects, uh, three Partners have been worked with uh, in 2019, John Michael Kohler Art Center, Sheboygan Area School District, and the Coastal Young Professional Network uh, through the Chamber. Year to date, uh, over 100,000 internet sessions have occurred by residents uh, at the Mead Public Library. Uh, year to date, uh, again through June, uh, 346,000 uh, plus writers, which is 58% uh, of our annual annualized goal of 600,000. Uh, for the first six months, it's up 23% over the comparable period in 2018. So something very unique is happening uh, with Shoreline Metro. For Metro Connection, uh, we're approximately at 50% uh, mark, uh, or 16,721 of our 34,000 uh, passenger goal. Some of you on your spread on your handout. Uh, the three was missing, it should say 34%, not four uh, on the goals. <clears throat> Next is infrastructure and public facilities. Uh, City Hall renovation, no doubt, is uh, a key action item for uh, 2019. Again, through June, uh, we're at 95% of achieving that goal as far as completing the project. And as you're aware, an open house is scheduled for Monday or Tuesday, September 3rd. Resurfacing of streets, uh, three streets in 2019, uh, we're engaged in resurfacing 
uh, not only local funds but state and federal funds through June, roughly a third of the, uh, specifically north as being the biggest project. Uh, it, uh, we're a third of the way through completion. Sheboygan A's, uh, this, again, this is a local partnership with the Sheboygan A's group. Uh, in 2019, uh, a major project for us and for them was the outfield lighting project, and that was completed in time for their 2019 season. For 2019, 526 trees were planted. Uh, our goal was 500. Uh, it's the highest uh, completion rate uh, in, for the last three years. No doubt this becomes more and more important, especially as we uh, see uh, cut down, stump, uh, all the emerald ash borer trees, uh, emerald ash trees that are affected by uh, the borer. Uh, economic development, uh, as Amy Wilson identified, uh, this becomes a, a bigger and bigger part of the sh city of Sheboygan's uh, economy. I think it's number two uh, overall for the, for the city. Uh, we've collected 271,000 and change as far as room taxes for the first quarter. Uh, we have not received all of the funding yet for that second quarter due to the delay uh, and deadlines associated uh, with the collection from the hotels. Uh, as you can imagine, in the city of Sheboygan, the third quarter is our largest quarter of the year. So even though um, if we look at the first quarter, it does not meet the 25%, which is a quarter of the year, and again, most of the revenue comes in during the second quarter or third quarter. For valuation of the city's TIDs, uh, the 2019 numbers have come out. Uh, we're at 127 of our benchmark or goal. Uh, this represents the 100, roughly 190 million, uh, billion, uh, million dollars represents a 36% increase over the 2018 valuation. A similar number of $188 million is the current value of industrial property. Uh, the valuation, as you know, uh, does not occur locally, but by the State Department of Revenue. Uh, this actually is roughly a million dollar decrease from last year. So as you know, a lot of a lot of industrial property depreciates as opposed to appreciates like residential commercial homes. Uh, so it's positive that we're basically on an even keel as far as valuation. New residential units uh, so far in 2019, 184 new units uh, per permits have been pulled. Uh, this can be attributed to the Seven Pen project as well as the Badger State Lofts, uh, both apartment projects. Uh, originally, our goal was 80, so we've far surpassed that. Um, the total anticipated 2019 residential units, uh, we think, will be closer to 300 units. Next, please. Uh, neighborhood revitalization. Uh, continued uh, uh, planning and development department continues to work on identifying baseline data so that we can get a sense as far as where we're at versus uh, all the efforts uh, that would be placed into bringing up uh, sort of the health of those older uh, neighborhoods. Uh, we're 75% through uh, creating that baseline data. Again, this is through the end of June. The 2019 targeted neighborhoods are South Calumet, River Bend, River uh, West, and South Lake. Um, not only do we look at the uh, structure, the residential structure, code compliance, but we also look at property uh, violations. Next is organizing annual spring cleanup events in partnership with Public Works. Uh, I know many of you uh, worked in conjunction with uh, Public Works Department in May of this year uh, for, again, all those neighbors, neighborhoods that are in a formalized, approved association, uh, nine at that time. Uh, the neighborhoods were provided with dumpsters uh, to help clean up those neighborhoods. Uh, next is develop analysis management plans for blighted, blighted property in key business corridors. Uh, we're 60 percent through that. Uh, 336 code enforcement orders were issued through June. This is 36 percent of our goal of 1,000. Uh, overall in 2018, for comparison purposes, on an annual basis, 866 uh, enforcement orders were issued. Uh, last is 244 garbage complaints were investigated or cited. 
This represents 82% of our overall benchmark, uh, which is 300. By comparison, in 2018, for the full year, 543, and in 2017, 820. So uh, hopefully this uh, number uh, is a recognition that we're, we're, we're sort of ahead of, ahead of the issue and we're seeing a downward trend. Governing and fiscal management. Uh, the second annual employee recognition event is scheduled for October 10th. This is to recognize employees with a significant service anniversary dates as well as uh, retirees from the prior year. Three legacy computer applications uh, have been closed out. Uh, this represents 100% uh, of our benchmark or target for 2019. Um, those specifically are car allowance, uh, building co contractor licensing, and sign fee programs. Uh, we're still in the process of identifying those legacy applications that are on the AS400 uh, with the goal ultimately to uh, <coughs> shut down the AS400 and rely upon uh, new programs that work in conjunction with <coughs> the city's uh, Tyler uh, system. Munis salary and benchmark module implementation. Uh, this is the single most uh, chal uh, challenge for many staff members in developing the 2020 budget. Instead of working off of an Excel spreadsheet that ultimately has to be uploaded or double entered into the Munis accounting system, we're utilizing for the first time a salary and benefit module that is Munis based and then we're exporting that information into an Excel spreadsheet uh, that ultimately uh, that format will be ma made available to you uh, within roughly two and a half weeks. Uh, as you know, earlier this year in July 2019, uh, the city received from Moody's Investor Service uh, confirmation of our AA2 uh, bond rating. Um, and, and that, that's quite an accomplishment. Communication. Uh, con continue steady increase in users of all city social media outlets. Uh, we're well over 100% of our benchmarks. From, uh, from January 1st, uh, 400 new Twitter uh, followers uh, exist. Uh, next door, we've added an additional 100 users. On Facebook, we've added 2,500 new likes. And on Nextel, uh, over 200 additional contacts. As far as community survey, again, this was done in conjunction with ARP. Uh, we exceeded our uh, benchmark of 1,100 at 1,277. No doubt we hope to increase that benchmark number uh, as we move forward in future years on the community survey. Uh, 27 fire department community events have occurred uh, this year. Um, 18 was the goal, and so that's a 150% or 50% increase of above and beyond the goal for 2019. Uh, that is the, my last slide. Again, thanks to all the city employees who make these accomplishments happen, and to all the common council members who have supported, including financial support, the implementation of the strategic plans, action items. Thank you. Thank you very much for that strategic plan update. Next, we'll move on to public forum. City Clerk. There is no one this evening. Very good. Then we'll go on to Mayor's announcements. <coughs> I'd like to ask uh, Mary Burkhardt to please step up to the front. Mary Burkhardt is a lifelong Sheboygan resident and a proud graduate of Immaculate Conception Grade School and Sheboygan South High School. Mary began her employment with the city of Sheboygan as a part-time clerk typist in the police department on August 19th of 1991. On December 22nd of 91, Mary was reclassified to the position of transcription data entry clerk. Mary transferred from her clerical transcriptionist position to the city dispatch center as a telecommunicator on November 6th of 1995. On April 18th of 2006, Mary accepted an offer to become the Sheboygan Municipal Court Secretary. 
but returned to her position in the police department as a telecommunicator on June 17th of 2006. Mary then continued in her role as a telecommunicator until all dispatch duties were moved to the county uh, on January uh, 1st of 2016, at which time she accepted the position as a record specialist clerk at the police department. During her time with the city, Mary has been a very dependable and reliable employee. Mary actively participated to improve the communication and work environment as a member of the Chief's Telecommunicators Work Group, and she participated in the City County Dispatch Work Groups to develop consistent processes and procedures for the move to Joint Dispatch. During her time with the city, Mary earned many commendations for exemplary work performance, teamwork, and professionalism. Several of these commendations include situations where Mary went beyond her duties as a telecommunicator to engage and investigate efforts that helped to narrow down and lead to the arrest of suspects. Mary's calm, cooler demeanor on the phone during high stress events was best demonstrated on Thursday of May 19th, excuse me, 29th of 2009, when she responded to a call from a frantic mother regarding her 12-year-old unresponsive son. Mary calmly sent emergency medical assistance while guiding the parents through rescue breathing and CPR. Mary's actions that day directly led to the child regaining a pulse and breathing on his own. Mary, we want to thank you for 28 years of dedicated service to the city of Sheboygan and its residents. And it's my pleasure to present the Certificate of Appreciation by the city of Sheboygan to Mary Burkhart in honor of her 28 years of dedicated service from August 19th of 1991 through August 1st of 2019. Congratulations, and we hope you have a great retirement. I just want to say what a pleasure it's been for this many years to always serve the public and always with a smile. If you've ever been to my desk um, at the police department, I have a specific sign that says smile, and it really does help the public to rethink their anger and <laughs> smile, and in return they get a smile back always. So thank you. Next, um, as Daryl mentioned, we want to ask everybody to join us in the grand reopening of City Hall on Tuesday, September 3rd. This event will be open to the public. No RSVP is needed, needed to attend. Um, you enter at the new entrance on the north side of Sheboygan Hall, City Hall. And from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock, we'll conduct an open house and tours of the building. At 4 o'clock, there will be a ribbon cutting, and then I will follow up with our council meeting at 6 o'clock. For the older persons, uh, around 5.30ish, uh, we're going to have a brief explanation of how to use the, the new call-in system. It should be pretty simple, but just want to get you acclimated to that. Um, city departments plan to be moving back into City Hall from their temporary locations beginning on September 4th, and we're hoping that we'll have all that done by the next two and a half or three weeks, or maybe the last week in September. Uh, the, na the last Levitamp concert is going to be held on August 22nd. Six o'clock uh, will feature Q in the Sun with uh, Shady and Baby Mott. And seven o'clock will free feature Chawa. Sounds interesting. <laughs> The Sheboygan uh, Pops Concert Band will have their last two free con summer concerts at Fountain Park on August 21st and August 28th. Those start at 6.30. And uh, we're having an open house for the River Bend neighborhood. Uh, this includes the 14th Street area just south of Erie Avenue. Uh, they can, p residents can come and provide feedback on the draft River Bend Master Plan. And then this will be held August 22nd at the Kiwanis Park Fieldhouse from 5 to 7 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next we'll move on with the consent agenda. Uh, that'll include items 2.2 through 2.17. Alderperson Wolf. 
Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive all five, receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all our, all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those are before us for discussion. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd request to pull 2.17 from the uh, consent agenda. Okay, we'll consider that separately. That's on the floor for discussion. Under uh, discussion, please thank proceed. You. Um, with that, I move to amend uh, GO uh, number 14-19-20 to delete the final line <coughs> of Section 1, thereby deleting the addition of a half-time maintenance worker. Is there a second to that? Second. Thank you for that motion and, or amendment and second. Um, is there any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor, uh, go ahead, Alderperson Sorensen. Uh, would Alderperson Donahue just want to explain her, her reasoning, just for some more information regarding this? Sure, and I'll, I'll turn that over to Mr. Beeble. Thanks. Uh, this position was already in the, in the table of organization. It was approved part of a larger reorganization back almost at the beginning of the year in January. So basically this ended up being a duplication. Now that we're finally getting to the point of filling the position, we thought we needed to get approval to get the position approved, but it's a duplication. Therefore, this evening we can delete this from this ordinance. Thank you for that information. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Now we need to uh, vote on the main motion as amended. Um, uh, with that, Mayor, I would uh, move that the uh, main motion uh, as amended uh, be approved. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Now we're dealing with the remaining part of the, um, the mo motion on uh, the rest of the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage for the remainder of the consent agenda. Nice. Motion passes. Under uh, reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.3 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.5 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 108 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 60 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne, authorizing city officials to execute a client service agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Grotto Appraisals LLC with regard to assessment services for the period of January 1st of 2020 through December 31st of 2022 and recommends adopting the resolution. All the person Donahue. Uh, I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <laughs> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 109 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 62 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Bourne, adopting certain changes in the city's medical benefit plan and dental benefit plan effective for calendar year 2020 coverage and establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates effective for January of 2020 coverage and thereafter. Alderperson Donahue. 
Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I wasn't able to attend finance and personnel last Monday. I guess this question would be for, for Daryl. Uh, Daryl, how did the premiums for two, 2020 <coughs> compare to 2019? I believe earlier discussions was there was going to be an increase. Uh, the resolution before you uh, deals with the city's ordinance associated with our, you know, with our uh, employee-employer mix. Uh, the recommendation is for the overall. Again, this is a self-funded health insurance plan. Mm -hmm. uh, the recommendation is to increase uh, premiums, both charged to the employer, the city, as well as the employee, by five percent. Uh, no change in the plan itself. However, the uh, HSA contribution, which was reduced in 2019, the recommendation is to eliminate it in 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 110 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel <coughs> Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 63 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2019 budget and recommends adopting the resolution. All the person Donahue. I move to uh, receive the report of the committee and <coughs> adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.4 is RC number 111 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 67 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2019 budget and recommends adopting the resolution. Alder Person Donahue. I move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 is RC number 112 of 1920 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. To whom was referred General Ordinance number 15 of 1920 by all the persons Sorensen and Mitchell repealing and recreating section 26-393 of the Municipal Code relating to permit fees for fences is to increase the permit fee from $25 to $40. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and, and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Was this uh, increase in the fee to, to bring us in line with uh, other communities for, for fences, or how did we come up with that? Alderperson Sorensen? Uh, I will send that to Chad. Chad's okay on that one? Chad, go ahead. Correct. Back uh, some time ago, we uh, did analysis and compared ourselves to our neighbors and to similar communities as it relates to maybe Manitowoc and Fond du Lac and Oshkosh and found out that most of them are charging roughly the $40. So that's where the recommendation came from. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine ayes, one no. Motion passes. Under general ordinances, item 6.1 will be referred to the City Plan Commission. Under other matters authorized by law, I'll turn it over to Charles Adams, City Attorney. 
7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2019, June 30th, 2020, and June 30th, 2021. That will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. 7.2 is a resolution by Alderperson Sorensen and Mitchell rescinding resolution number 410304. That will also be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We'll stand adjourned and thank you for your time tonight. Thank you.